Um, we will move on to uh, the next presentation, which is by Professor uh, Tarek al Dasti, a professor of uh, radiology and the president of the Egyptian Society of Radiology and, and, and Nuclear Medicine and the co president of our uh, Congress, Professor Tarek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the kind introduction. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. I'm going to uh, speak about interventional uh, procedures in urogenital emergencies. I have nothing to disclose. Uh, the learning objectives of this talk are to review the types of uh, urological uh, and genital emergencies, to highlight principles of diagnosis and imaging features, and to demonstrate the role of interventional radiology in uh, management uh, of these um, uh, emergencies. We have non-vascular causes like obstructive uh, uropathy uh, with significant oliguria or anuria and life-threatening infection. Vascular causes are either hemorrhagic due to trauma or spontaneous hemorrhage and uh, non-hemorrhagic like vascular uh, thrombosis. So for uh, non-vascular indications, uh, bilateral obstruction with anuria is uh, an emergency and we usually start with uh, the site of with better parenchymal sickness, uh, despite that uh, uh, even the more dilatation, the more easy the process, like here with advanced hydronephrosis, we can see the needle easier than with a patient with mild obstruction. Uh, Percutaneous nephrostomy uh, aims at relieve the obstruction and allows other interventions like uh, urethral stenting, anti-grade uh, double G stent of the ureter, and balloon dilatation. So we use the uh, uh, ultrasound guided puncture, puncture for the kidney and then opacify the system by contrast media and insert the wire and serial dilatation and at the end insert the big tail uh, nephrostomy caster and do the anti-grade uh, uh, biography. This is a case of kidney transplant recipient uh, uh, suffered from uh, uh, anuria after uh, needle biopsy. This is multiple blood clots obstructing the kidney and ureter and it is a temporary procedure, uh, the nephrostomy tells the resolution of the blood clots here, follow-up anti-grade study, no further uh, clot obstruction. Regarding the uh, uh, infection, emphysematous renal infection is a life-threatening, fulminate necrotizing upper urinary tract infection, usually associated with gas within uh, uh, or surrounding the kidney. When there is um, the gas in the uh, renal parenchyma, intraparenchymal air, it's called emphysematous bilonephritis. Emphysematous bilitis if the air only in the pelvic ACL system, and if the air mainly outside um, in the perinephric tissue, it's called perinephric, uh, in the perinephric space, it's called perirenal uh, uh, emphysematous perinephritis. This is a case of emphysematous perinephritis. The air uh, usually is in the perinephric space with uh, small locules in the kidney. So regarding the, we ha have to do a nephrostomy for the kidney and uh, this uh, perinephritis require also a drainage of this uh, large amount of air by percutaneous tube here after drainage. Regarding the uh, uh, embolization for arterial uh, uh, bleeding, the main indication is renal hemorrhage. Also, in some cases of uh, bladder, uterine, and prostatic hemorrhage. And uh, non-hemorrhagic uh, emergency is high flow uh, bribes. We'll give some examples for these indications. Hemorrhagic emergency is defined as massive bleeding and or hematuria causing hemodynamic instability and requiring immediate intervention. Transarterial embolization is a well-established endovascular treatment of life-threatening hemorrhagic vascular emergencies. The uh, 
renal hemorrhage is usually uh, due to trauma, blunt or penetrating trauma, and some now many cases with atrogenic injury after biopsy, percutaneous nephrolysotomy, or even percutaneous nephrostomy. A spontaneous hemorrhage where, 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 with or without underlying pathology can be uh, uh, seen in uh, uh, less common cases. So for uh, uh, renal pseudoaneurysm, uh, it's usually post-traumatic, and it, 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 the wall of the pseudoaneurysm is made up by the tissue surrounding the aneurysm. It is known as the true aneurysm with three layers of the vascular wall. We do Doppler ultrasound, we can see the two and fro waveform on the spectral Doppler, and this is on gray scale, the pseudoaneurysm, and this pattern on color, uh, color mode. On CT and geography, you can see here the pseudoaneurysm and here segmental area distal to the pseudoaneurysm with less enhancement. On the axial image, this is the pseudoaneurysm attenuation similar to that of the aorta with large perirenal hematoma. Another uh, uh, patient with post-traumatic pseudoaneurysm who can notice here the pseudoaneurysm and increase in the attenuation of the uh, uh, pelvic cell system due to blood inside. And this is the castor and geography demonstrating the pseudoaneurysm. Pseudoaneurysm, like this case, is vascular uh, cavity uh, with, uh, filled with contrast, while the arteriovenous fistula is early f uh, visualization of the renal vein in the arterial phase. So we do intra-arterial digital subtraction and geography, followed by subselective casterization of the injured vessel using uh, we try first the standard caster. If not, we use a micro caster. Then delivery of the embolic material. We use, uh, in most cases, uh, coils and some cases with polyvinyl alcohol sponge or uh, glue in less uh, cases. And this is a case of a 55-year-old male patient with severe hematuria after percutaneous nephrolysotomy. You can see here the pseudoaneurysm on CT. And this is the aneurysm on uh, uh, selective angiography. Despite it being in distal aneurysm, we can try also the standard caster. We can reach here, and this is a feeding artery, and this is a normal visit. We try by the standard caster and flexible guide wire to only casterize this. We can reach here only to the pseudo aneurysm when uh, inject the uh, uh, coil, and here after uh, delivery. And this is the post embolization procedures with preservation of all the remaining renal uh, vasculature. Spontaneous renal hemorrhage are usually due to uh, bleeding from angiomaliboma, uh, arteriovenous malformation, and in some cases, uh, hypervascular uh, renal cell carcinoma. This is the case of angiomaliboma here and was uh, complicated with retroperitoneal hemorrhage. And here the angiography, we try to reach the feeding artery, and this is the feeding artery with the coil delivered, and this is angiography after embolization, no opacification of the pseudo, uh, of the angiomaliboma and preservation of the whole renal uh, uh, vasculature. Arteriovenous fistula, as you know, it is a congenital uh, anomaly and it's a rare benign lesion, more common in, in women. And this is a case of 42-year-old uh, female uh, presented with hypertension and severe hematuria. And here is a CT angiography with large arteriovenous malformation. Here is the angiography of the kidney, all vessels opacified. And here we try to reach the feeding artery and inject the uh, embolic material. And here uh, this is... Uh, 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 normal vessels opacified, so we try to go to, uh, to the only the, um, the uh, 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 feeding artery and embolize it, and this is post embolization angiogram with no filling only of the stump of the um, malformation. This is a CT before and CT after follow up, and this is the CT angiography before and here after angiography uh, after embolization. Here is the uh, intravenous urography before. This is the mass effect, and this is a, a CT urography after embolization with very uh, 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 significant reduction and preservation of the excretory function. 
For post partum hemorrhage here, we can do diagnostic angiography to see the uh, uterine uh, arteries. We uh, 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 embolize the right one. Here, this is after delivery of the particles. And uh, this is after embolization, no further filling of the, uh, 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 the uh, other side. We go to the right side and uh, embolize the uh, right uterine artery. And this is after embolization, uh, no further filling of the uh, uh, uterine vessel. High flow priapism is due, usually um, due to traumatic uh, 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 arterial uh, cavernosal fistula. This uh, child, uh, eight year old, with arterial cavernosal uh, fistula post traumatic at the right side here, we can see on the contrast enhanced MRI, here is the uh, ar uh, arterial cavernosal fistula, and we can embolize this using the microcaster to reach the biodendal artery distal to the feeding artery here. And here we can go to the feeding artery by the microcaster and in inject, uh, deliver the coil, microcoils, and this is after uh, embolization. Post embolization angiogram with preservation of uh, potency in the follow up uh, 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 clinics. So, vascular thrombosis is either arterial with uh, these uh, ultrasound uh, uh, findings and uh, venous thrombosis with absent venous flow, but there is abnormal high resistance intra-arterial uh, waveform. Both uh, complications require very uh, rapid intervention. Here a case of kidney transplant recipient. The basal is good with good perfusion, or perfusion on power doubler mode. This is uh, one day of uh, event. Here we can see the, the uh, 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 the reduction of the uh, power flow. So after this uh, event, we can see uh, the follow-up absent venous flow, high resistive arterial waveform with reversed diastolic flow. Reversed diastolic flow, as you know, is highly suggestive of renal vein thrombosis. So uh, uh, we do MR and geography and venography. This is a patent graft artery a thrombosed right external iliac vein and thrombosed graft vein. So the diagnosis is established of graft venous thrombosis. There is uh, many options for treatment. We, um, we decide to have combined local and systemic injection of streptokinase. And if these options fail, the patient usually is uh, subjected to graft nephrectomy. So, we do a direct caster venography with local injection of streptokinase, fractionated dose of this total amount with systemic injection of streptokinase to have uh, a target of INR uh, 2 to 3. This is the venography. We go from the contralateral uh, femoral vein, and here we inject distal to the site of the graft. Here is the stump of the graft vein. We, by the flexible gadwar, we go and inject fractionated streptokinase and here we go uh, distally and inject the other doses and here we can reach canalization, recanalization of the graft vein and this is the pre uh, uh, thrombolysis. This is pre thrombolysis and after thrombolysis. And this is the follow up uh, patent graft vein with good perfusion and executory, uh, preserved executory function of the kidney on T1 weighted MR and uh, MR uh, urography. So, in conclusion, interventional procedures are very useful and minimally invasive tools in management of urologic emergencies in renal hemorrhage and renal hemorrhagic emergencies. Such techniques are not only nephron sparing, but in many situations also life saving procedures. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, any questions?